Hey YouTube, it's Jay. Today we're going to be talking about a route that makes heavy use of the Corner 5 system. Um, my last video was what you need to know for the Corner 5 system for this particular uh, route. If you haven't watched the Corner 5 video, go watch it now. We'll wait. Come, come on back. We'll, we'll still be here. Go watch the Corner 5 video from the, the one I just did as my last video before this one. So we're getting ready to get into a couple of routes that take you around the table. These are around the horn routes. There's a uh, one, two, th at least three of them that I use with regularity. Um, so let's, uh, let me remind you of something really important. We always want to keep it simple. You don't want to be going around the table if you don't have to. Okay, if I have a half table pattern, and I, I don't really care what that half table pattern is, um, I do not want to have to go around the table to get a leave on that three. Okay, why? Because all kinds of bad things can happen like running into it. What I want to do with a half table pattern is I want to use one of three ways and sometimes a fourth. So on a half table pattern like this, and we're going we're to talk about why I'm talking about this in just a second, but uh, on a half table pattern like this, what we want to do is one of three and sometimes four ways of getting on a ball. We want to stun into position. We want to roll directly forward or directly back. Okay. We want to bounce the cue ball off a rail. Which didn't happen there. You can see I was trying to bounce off the rail. Uh, and then the fourth one is on occasion, on occasion, you'll have something like this and need to go around the horn two rails or to, to get your leave, okay? So maybe you're, you're just a little off straight in, so they're really straight in. If you draw this, it comes over here, you don't have a shot. If you follow, you end up down here trying to shoot the tough shot in the side. So you use a little bit of English to go around the horn to get your leave, okay? So those are the, those are the three and sometimes four. And you'll find that all half table patterns use those four things. Where we start to, when we're talking about routes, especially routes where you're going to let the cue ball go a little bit, we're typically talking about situations where you have to go from one end of the table to the other end of the table. Okay? And when that happens, that's what these routes are for that I'm, sh I'm showing you. It's for getting from one end of the table to the other. It's not for the half table. The half table doesn't matter. The half table, if you have all, all of the balls here and none of them is obstructed and none of them is frozen to another ball, it's pretty easy to get out from there for anybody. You just have to make the shots, right? In a half table pattern, you've got four pockets. If I've got something like this, I have a choice. I can shoot the one and, and, and play bottom right and get over here and shoot the four in the side. I can, I can shoot top left, get over here, shoot it in this side. I can roll forward this way and shoot it in that corner. Personally, I would shoot it this way, I would shoot it in the corner, come off the rail and straight up into this leave zone up here, 
for the four there. And oh, by the way, we could also just slow roll it, have it bounce off, have the cue ball bounce off, and leave ourselves a straight in shot for that corner. Okay, so there's all kinds of options there. Uh, when you're talking about half table patterns, it's pretty easy to get from get from one shot to the next, and you usually have at least two or three good options, and you can play to your strengths. But what happens when you don't have a ball to get to the other end of the table? Okay, this would be called a bridge ball. Okay, so in the best of all worlds, you have a ball that's in the right sequence for nine ball, or or an eight ball. It could be any one of your set that allows you to shoot this in pretty much however you want and guarantees you you'll be able to get to this side of the table. Okay, guarantees you you can get to the other side of the table in a perfect world. But what if you don't have it? How do we get on that eight? Well, that's those are the routes that we're talking about and this particular one would be the straight up the table route that I talked about where you just shoot it in, bounce off the rail, and roll up the table into the wide part of the leave zone and have it bounce off and give you a little angle for the eight and roll up here for the nine in that corner. That, that's how you would do it. That's what these routes are for. It's for when you need to get from one end of the table to the other. And I'll tell you something that you may or may not have seen, and that is almost every rack uh, So nearly every rack, well actually every rack in nine ball, has at least one time when you need to move from one end of the table to the other. And if you're really lucky, that seven is sitting up here where you can use it as a bridge to get to the other end. But like here, we have no bridge ball. There's always one in nine ball. I, I don't think I've ever seen a rack where you didn't have to move from one end of the table to the other. Um, eight ball. Same thing. Eight ball, even more so than nine ball, because uh, the good news with eight ball is that you have the choice of what you shoot in what order. And as a general rule, you want to shoot everything at one. At the end of the table, the eight ball is not on first. You'll typically have a ball somewhere in the middle, not always, but usually, somewhere in the middle. So you shoot everything at one end. You use the middle one as the bridge. You use the last balls over here as how you get on your eight. 99% of eight ball racks can be played exactly that way and it works really well. If you watch the pros, you'll see that's exactly what they do. Uh, the only time that they will deliberately move from one end of the table to the other and then back again is when there's a problem ball and the way, easiest way to solve it is to use something on this table, this end of the table, to get a guaranteed position on that problem ball. Other than that, you just won't see it. So in nine ball, uh, and by the way, straight pull, you typically will have one or two balls at this end of the table, and you want to get rid of them early because you want to have a way to get back to this end of the table without getting lost. Okay, all right, so that's what we use these routes for. So let's talk about the route itself. Okay. Now we, we told you last time corner five is through the second diamond from the center of the pocket through the second diamond with top running English, right? So you saw me shoot this about a thousand times in that video, and it always goes, well, okay, so I you saw I hit too far up. I didn't aim. How about I aim? And it always goes right up there by the corner. Right now, I will tell you that if you don't put the top English on it, funny thing, and this is this is actually how I play it. Um, I, I was telling you the traditional corner five. The way that I play it is the third diamond with run with running English and no top, no bottom, just straight running English. And what you'll find is that it works exactly the same way. And for me, it's more reliable to go in the pocket. Um, that's just me. That, that is a function of my stroke. If you're stroke, you don't get as much English as I do. 
you are not going to get that shot to do what it does for me, okay? And it does it on either side. It's just because I tend to get more spin than a lot of people do. Um, so that becomes a really, really reliable shot for me. Uh, so I use the third diamond with just left, not top left in this case, or right, not top right on that case. But today, the route we're going to talk about is actually a five rail route. And that route runs from the first diamond here. It happens to go exactly through the spot, the foot spot, to the first diamond here with no English. And you hit it pretty hard and it goes five rails, okay? That's the route. Now, you'll notice that when it left down here, it was effectively going on our corner five route, right? That was going in, by the way. All we've done is we've added a couple of rails to it. So, first diamond, through the first diamond, no English, hit it hard. It will pick up the spin it needs and go five rails into the corner. Or, or very close to it. That's our route. Now when we're talking about these around the table routes, you can, you, you want to think of this as, you, you don't want to think of this as I have to be on this line to be able to shoot this route. That's not what you want to think. That's not how you want to think about these, okay? Do they work? Yeah, of course they do. Um, but that's not how you want to think about it. What you want to think about is, okay, my next shot is here. I have shot in this side on my ball before it and for whatever reason I don't want to just draw back for it okay uh, or just roll off the rail to it in this case if I roll off the rail I'm going away from my shot and I, yeah, I could probably get a lead out here for the nine um, if I draw it I'm going to draw this way, which again is not a great shot. But you know what is a great shot? I can take advantage of my corner five, right? I know, I know that my cue ball, remember if it hits here, there's my, there's my tangent line making it, okay? And I look at my shot from the center of the pocket through the second diamond, and I see what it points at, and this is pointing at it. So, um, I am actually going to make contact with the rail at two and three quarter diamonds, which means that it's going to come off this rail at two, remember, one, two and a quarter, because five minus 2.75 is 2.25, two and a quarter, okay? And it's going to go straight towards that pocket. That means this is going to come down this line. That cue ball will end somewhere on that line. Well. I have a straight in shot on the nine anywhere on that line. So instead of sending the cue ball down here and just rolling it and taking the long shot or hitting it and drawing and taking the long shot, I am perfectly fine using my corner five route. Okay. I hit it a little full, so I came a little deeper. But again, I'm still in my shot and I was coming up the zone. If I hit it just a little bit harder, If I hit that shot just a little bit harder, okay, right into two and a quarter and straight down towards it, you can't ask for a better leave than that, right? Isn't that a whole lot better?
than slow rolling this ball off the rail and taking chances on how fat I hit it. Isn't that a lot better than trying to draw? Isn't that a lot better than trying to draw this into position? That seems a whole lot harder to me. That's what we're going to use the strap for. And the point is, the point I'm making is, you don't have to use the whole five rails, okay? All you need to do is use the rails that you need. Uh, you don't have to use the whole route, let me put it that way, because it's true whether it's a five rail route or a three rail route or a two rail route. Um, we're gonna talk about plus two routes at some point. Um, so, if you have something like this, it's a whole lot easier just to hit it where you can hit it with some authority, have it come around, and it's naturally going to move down the line of the shot, right? We don't want to force it. We certainly don't want to try to hit this hard and drive straight into the rail and back and back that way. That, that's a lot of spin. It can be done, but it's a lot of spin. The only time we wouldn't want to do that is if we had some questionable obstacles. You know, I just assume that the nine's the next shot. I want to reorder everything, but now, now that's not the right shot, okay? <clears throat> so what we don't want to do is take that risky shot with the stuff in the way. Well, what if, what if you got something like this, right? Oh, okay, let's reverse those two balls, or three balls. Let's say that the three's down here and it's your next shot. get the nine right there and the cue ball's here so you've got a shot on it right you've got a shot on this but if we try to roll forward with spin we're going to be coming towards this corner pocket we're go going to end up most likely scratching this okay so if I shoot this and I try to go that three rail round, there are all kinds of scratches in there. See how close I came to that side. So let's uh, set that back up. Well, there's nothing that says that I have to enter this route. I think it was about there. It was pretty close, maybe about there. Um, there's nothing that says I have to enter this route here. I can enter the route on this end rail. I can use bottom left hand English, shoot this ball in, draw it so that it comes back this way, and then spins to this same point. We're still trying to hit the two and a quarter mark, right? We're still trying to hit that two and a quarter mark. So we can do that skipping the first rail because of the risk of this scratch and this scratch and there's actually a scratch down there as well. Um, so we can skip all that risk by skipping that rail. So now we can do the same thing. We're still following the same route. We're just coming to it at a different place. Okay, and yes, the, the route's a little different because it came off came wider to this rail, but that's okay. We still have our shot. We, we, we have this giant leaf zone here. We still have a great shot. Okay. We still get out of this rack. So when we're talking about these leaf zones, we're talking about the routes that we can follow that um, that are pretty standard that will let us get there and we, we're talking about routes we can enter at any point okay what if I have let's say 
I've got the five hanging in the pocket. The cue ball is way, way, way down there. The nine ball is say uh, right in the center of the rail. And the seven is there blocking, right? Um, five's down in pretty tight in the corner pocket. The uh, seven is here, it's blocked by the nine, so I can't just roll this and stop here and shoot short side. I have to get over to the other side. Um, there are a couple ways to do this, uh, but the most reliable for me is this five rail route. So again, remember, the five rail route runs from diamond one on this rail to diamond one on this rail, right? Now, when we shoot this, it's going to hit here, it's going to hit about half, and it's going to go up this way. Now, remember this. There is a route that we're going to talk about later that goes from here through here into the side pocket. So we've got to be aware that if we put the wrong English on this, we're either going to go in the side pocket or we're going to hit one of the one of the horns. Okay, so we don't want to put any English on this. Let the natural English of the of the contact handle getting you around the table. So, here's the problem with this shot. This is the most difficult shot in the game of pool. Okay? And right now, everybody out there is laughing at me. This shot is the easiest to make in the game of pool, but it is the most difficult and the most fraught with peril on leagues. And the reason for that is that because you have such a wide latitude all the way from this side all the way around to this side that you can hit that ball and it, it goes in um, and even a little further uh, it's very you, you it's very easy to make but the problem is that the difference between hitting it here and hitting it here two or three millimeters the difference in the action of the cue ball is immense if I hit this with, say, a three-quarter ball hit, right? I follow it in. <clears throat> if I hit this just a little bit to the left, where I don't follow it in. Well, okay. Maybe I'm just not seeing those millimeters today. I don't know. All right, so a little bit further to the left, cue ball just stops. If I draw the ball just a little tiny bit of draw straight at it, Now we come straight up this way. But on the same shot with the same angle, I hit it just a little tiny bit to the left. And now my draw makes me go over that way, right? This is a dangerous shot. It's dangerous because it's the smallest change in the shot completely changes the outcome of the lead. It's not that the shot's hard to make, it's not. I can make that with my eyes closed. I can make that just hitting the ball around the table. Just literally hit the ball around the table and make that shot, right? So, and by the way, that shot I just shot is an extension of the five rail. <laughs> and I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, it's easy to make this shot, but if I have to get over to the other side of the table, there are three ways you can do that. No, nope. and you saw one of them. One of them is to draw it. It's about a half ball hit and letting the cue ball just come straight across. Okay, that's not a bad choice if you've got a good draw stroke, except that if you hit it a millimeter to the left, you end up not getting your leave. Okay, so, and this, by the way, is how a lot of people will play that shot. 
a lot of people will play this by drawing it. I don't like that because the smallest change in your angle can cause it to do crazy things. Um, the second way to leave it is actually a kind of cool shot. It's top left. You hit the ball full, the cue ball hits here, comes out, spins around, and ends up on this side. It does not, not that much. It, what it does is it hits, comes up, it spins around, and ends up over here, and the nine ball guarantees that it stays there. Not a bad way to shoot it if you have the stroke for it. Okay? But, again, a lot can go wrong with that shot. So how do you shoot this shot and get consistent results? Well, you use the five rail corner five route. You shoot the ball, you cut it thin, the cue ball hits here, it hits anywhere on this rail, it hits anywhere on this rail, it hits anywhere on this rail, and it comes down here. Uh, and unless you just get it absolutely wrong, you end up somewhere out here. Even if you hit it short and end up up here, you've got a decent shot. You're going to have to go around the table for the nine, but it's survivable. Um, so for this shot, I would really play, hit it thin, let it bounce off the rail. No English. The only English you want on it is what the five puts on it. Because if you put left-hand English on this, if you put running English on this, uh, it is going to be on the path for that scratch in the side. And you're going to get yourself in trouble with that. So no English. Hit it fairly thin. We want to hit it all the way out like here. Okay, we don't want to hit it full because if we hit it full, the cue ball goes nowhere. We want to hit it thin, but we don't want to hit, we don't want to try to thin, thin, thin cut it straight over. So we want to hit it thin, but not shaving it. Okay? And you see we come up one, two, three, and we come over here for our leave, and hopefully we don't end up behind the nine, and we're fine. If we'd rolled here, we wouldn't have been. Let's see what's going this way. So right here, it wouldn't have been fine. But you know, it's killing, it's going long row to long row, so it's killing it off this rail. So you see, that's, that's how I would play this shot, because it just comes up naturally where you need it to be. You get your angle on the nine, and you're out. Okay. So you remember I told you you could enter this route anywhere you wanted to, and I shot that shot a minute ago where I made the uh, four rail kick. Here's how that worked. Here's my straight line on the cue ball, right? There's my straight line on the cue ball. I come here, I go corner five, right? I look through my second diamond. I see that it points, for me, it points right here. Okay, that's, that's the angle to my second diamond. So I've got the cue ball, hits here, and goes that way. <clears throat> what, what I have to do, all I have to do to make this ball four rails, is look at this angle, okay, and then translate that to the cue ball. <clears throat> so you remember I was talking about if we want it to go that angle off the cue ball, we hit the cue ball, you look at the vertical line on the cue ball to the, to the base, and then you come off at the same angle you want it to come off of here. <clears throat> and because this is going straight at the side pocket, I'm going to add just a little tiny bit to keep it out of the side pocket. And this becomes a self-correcting shot that goes straight to the corner and hopefully makes one ball. And it doesn't matter where you are on the table for this. You could be over here. It's that same angle. You're hitting the cue ball in the same place. And again, it goes towards that corner. Is it going to be perfect? No. Uh, but once you once you learn how to look at it, once you learn how to how to hit this ball. 
you'll find that you make that shot a whole lot more than you miss it. And all I'm doing is I'm coming in, instead of coming in with the five rail shot, I'm just coming in in the center and catching it on this rail. And then I, it's the three rail shot. If I was here, right, I could look at that second diamond, my spot on the second diamond. I could go here, I could shoot it and just shoot it and it goes three rails to the corner. That one did. All I'm doing is adding a rail. So instead of five, I'm cutting this rail out and going forward. Not always perfect, but it works. To, for, for leaves, it works just fine. For, for the kick shot, it's a little iffy. All right, anyhow, um, let's take a look at some racks. Let's do some racks. It's been a while since we talked through a rack. Okay, well, we're not gonna make anything this time. All right, so what do we have? We have the, the one, we've got a shot on it. We've got the two over here, so same half table, three, four, five, and six are all on this half of the table. So we should get to the six with no problem. Now, where we have to pay attention is getting from the six to the seven, okay? So we're going to have to, on this shot, either get close to the rail and go this way, which is a bad idea because that eight's there, or we're going to have to get on this side, which is really fortunate because if I do it right, I can get straight in on the five and just stop the ball there and have a perfect angle to go six off the rail and down for the seven, right? Then I have to shoot the seven and get an angle to get back from the eight to the nine. Now, because of where the eight is, because it's close to the rail, the easiest way for me to do that is to get out here, somewhere on an angle like this because that will allow me to shoot the eight with just a little bit of draw and maybe a little bit of right, hit the rail and spin down this way. And if I'm going to miss my speed, I would rather miss my speed and be on this side of the nine than to be on this side of the nine, right? Anywhere over here, I've got a shot on that nine. It's not a great shot, but it's not a horrible shot either. Uh, but anywhere down here, I'm, I'm kind of screwed, right? So I want to make sure when I shoot this eight that I bounce off the rail and as I'm coming down the table, I stay above the straight in line. So I want to be on that side, the left side as we're looking at it now, as I'm looking at it, um, yeah, it's your left also, of the, knot, of the line on the knot. Okay, so we are going to have an interesting challenge getting from the one to the two. Now, the good news is because it's a half table shot, we know that we can just simply shoot it in, hit the rail, hit the rail, and come up for the two. We're, we're going to have to leave the three. That's a little interesting, but, but our first consideration is getting on that two, which means we're going to have to go flat into the rail without scratching, hit. We're going to have to get in deep enough that when we come down, we, we are past the nine, because if we hit that nine, it's down. <clears throat> that hitting the nine will end this run, and we'll be playing safe. So this, again, should be a relatively easy rack. We've got everything in this side. We only have to cross from one end of the table to the other twice, once from the six, and once from the eight. And the one from the eight, we don't actually have to cross the table. We just need to play kind of a stun shot and take what we get take what the table is going to give us. Um, so we're really only having to move the ball along a route once, and that's going from the six to the seven. So this should be relatively easy because we only have to cross the table once, and that's what you want. Okay. I did hit that a little bit hard. Um, I kind of would have liked to have been about here, but this is, this is just fine. Now we're trying to get on the three. 
we do not want to shoot this three in the side. If we shoot here and come out here for the three in the side, we, we're going to have to go around the table for the four. What I'm, my point in showing you these racks is that we just want to keep it simple. We don't want to make this hard on ourselves. So what I can do fairly easily is I can shoot the two and I can just go top and just roll the ball off the rail right here, off the rail right here, and up here to shoot the three in the corner. Now, that's going to give me absolute position on the four because it's a stop shot, right? So I can stop it, I can shoot the four, which is going, if I stop it, it's gonna be right here, which means I can shoot the four. You can see that there's a little bit of angle there. That little bit of angle will let me move over for the five. I can stop on the five and I'll have the perfect angle on the six to come off the rail, off the rail. We'll, we'll talk about that side to side route uh, very soon. But that's what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, we did not get there. Okay, so I did not hit that very well at all. Not at all. So I have choices here. I can shoot the three on the backward cut. Uh, if I do, the problem with that is I'm going to run into the four. The good news about that is that the four, that because the, the shot the, or the tangent line runs straight into the four towards that side pocket, it means I can shoot this, I can hit the four, I'm not all that worried about it. I want to make sure I either hit it soft enough that it does not go to the rail, because if it goes to the rail, then I'm in trouble, or hard enough that it hits the rail and bounces out. Now, personally, you know me, I like to shoot um, I like to shoot solid shots. The other thing is, if I happen to shoot this exactly right, the three goes in up there, the four goes in over here, and the cue ball stuns just a little bit and gives me somewhat of an angle on the five. I'll have to work to get from the five to the six, but that is an option. And this whole thing is caused because I under hit that two. If I hit that two right, I go one, two, and I spin this way, to give myself the shot on the three. All right, let's go ahead and shoot it. Okay, I got my bounce off the rail. I hit that too hard. Okay, well, I hit it too hard, but I landed it dead straight in. Okay, so this is close, so I'm gonna have to jack up on it to avoid the double hit. Wow, this is tough. Okay. We got away with that. We did not double hit that. All right. Um, so I've got a little weird angle on the five. I can either shoot the five in and bounce off the rail and out, or I can shoot it and just go to the rail. Like I said, I'm concerned about getting straight in. If I get straight in, I've got a full table draw. Do I have the stroke to do it? Yes. Do I want to do it? Never. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this with stun left, which is going to take the ball over, hit the rail, and then spin this way. Now that is going to leave me in the straight in shot longer than I have to be, but it gives me more, actually, you know what, I'm just going to stun this straight and come off the rail and try to come out here. Um, if I misjudge the stun, maybe I end up over here. We'll, we'll figure it out. A lot, a lot of ways this can go right. That's just about perfect. So now I can choose to just pure draw, which is going to take me one, two rails and down the zone. That's a good shot, but it's going to require me to hit it really hard. I would rather use a little English to help me down the, uh, down the rail. So for me, I'm going to shoot this with bottom left which is going to take it off there. It's going to widen the angle and then it's going to spin down. I don't like that. I think uh, 
just a little tiny bit of bottom so that I'm not moving forward and fighting the spin. Just enough bottom to get it to come this way and then let it spin down. So that's, that's how I'm going to try to shoot this. Uh, if you saw it, my stroke was really screwed up. Um, I rushed it. I didn't go straight through. I got pretty much where I wanted to be. Now we can put the seven in, come straight back for the eight. I did exactly what I didn't want to do. I got straight in on the eight. I am as straight in as you can possibly be on that eight. So now, this is really ugly. So I have to draw this ball back. I'm going to be coming close. So first of all, let's show you the line here. Here is the line the cue draws down. Now I can use a little bit of English to make it a little bit wider, but look how look how tiny my lead zone is here, right? Anything outside that I'm, I'm missing. So I'm going to deliberately overdraw this and I'm try, going to try to hit the rail and bounce up for the shot out here. Um, I don't like it, wouldn't want to shoot it. Obviously we'd have to shoot it. Well, my opponent went because I missed the six. And I draw straight in the corner. When we're talking about these routes, the ones that I'm talking about, like the one today, these are about getting from one end of the table to the other and how you can do that and how you can do that safely. Um, we do not want to overcome it. We want to keep it simple. Let's do another rack. Okay, decent break. Am I going to have a shot on the three? Yeah, kind of. It's not a great shot on the three. Okay, so what do we have here? This is this rack is a little more complicated. We still have that nine eight blocking the four pattern that we had before, um, but this time, fortunately, we've got a way to get through there. We can shoot the three up in the corner, and that tangent line runs right at the seven. So if we put a little top English on it, it's going to bounce off, and then it's going to curve a little forward, and it's going to go in hopefully over for that four. So we, we start out having to, having to switch from this side of the table to this side of the table. And then immediately after that, we have to go back this side of the table to this side of the table. Then we've got the six and the seven in the middle. Now the good thing is the, the six is a great bridge ball because if I get a position over here, I can shoot the five and, either come, and come on either side of that six and I'm going to be able to naturally leave myself a shot on the seven a stop shot on the seven gives me a stop shot on the eight that just stuns over an inch, and then I've got a straight in shot on the nine. So this part's easy. The seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, that's easy. Where the challenge in this rack is, is once again, going from this end of the table to this end of the table, then back to this end of the table, and then getting my leap on the six. Now the six is out in the middle, which means all six pockets are available to it. So I'm not real worried about the six, but this back and forth from the three to the four and the four to the five is where all of the challenge in this rack exists. And by the way, I could also shoot that three up there and go off the rail and out, but that takes me towards the side pocket. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take the backward cut is what I would take. It's the lower risk option. If I shoot at pocket speed, I should end up with the cue over here. And if I miss the three, it ends up down here somewhere behind the, the eight and the nine. So I, I've got a built-in two-way shot. I'm going to get safe. I can focus on making the shot. And, if it, and just know that if it doesn't work out, uh, if I miss it, I'm going to end up safe. So that's, that's the route that you, you would take from this end to that end. Okay, I made it. And it worked out exactly perfect. Okay, now this is route number three. We're going to come off the four, off the rail, and straight up the table towards five. Now we don't want to be on this rail. 
So to avoid being on this rail, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, right hand English so that I shoot it in and it spins over and hopefully bounces out. Now, that means I'm going to take a longer shot on the five, but getting from the five to the six is fairly easy because the six goes in any pocket. So I have all kinds of options there. So I'm going to elect, I mean, I've got enough that I can roll up the table and just use top English, but top English is one of the well-known scratches on this. If I shoot this with top English, I'm gonna be going straight at that side pocket. I don't want to hit that side pocket. So I'm going to use a little bit of inside English, both to help with the speed and to force myself to hit the rail without coming within that half a diamond. You remember that, right? We don't want to come within a half a diamond of the pocket without absolute control over the shot. So top, top, inside English, top right, not a lot. Okay, we forced it over. We, we didn't hit it hard enough to hit that six. We knew that that six was there, so we didn't want to hit it. That's fine. Now we've got some options here on how to get on the six. Um, I think that the way that I would do this, uh, a lot of people will be tempted to draw this and try to draw over here. Um, I don't like that shot. The draw and the left make this shot much harder than it has to be. I want to just put that in. So I'm going to use top right. I'm going to shoot it in. I'm going to take advantage of the route that we talked about today and spin one, two, and then I'm rolling towards the six on the right angle. And I'm never going to cross the center, which would get me in trouble. I'm always going to be on this side of the six. So that, that's how I'm going to shoot this shot. Top right, come around with the six in the side. Okay, so I've got the six inside. Now, as much as I hate rolling the ball, it's the right shot here, okay? I would love to roll and hit this rail and come out, but the angle that I've got is gonna send it down here and I don't wanna take a chance on going behind the eight nine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this soft, almost a drag shot. I'm going to, the speed and the spin that I'm going to use, I'm gonna be using bottom to start with but what I want to have it do is lose the bottom and hit this absolutely dead. When the cue ball hits the ball absolutely with no English and the spin has taken all of the momentum off of it, the cue ball just rolls a little bit. And it won't, it won't like roll all the way down because you, you've basically set it up so the cue ball is going to stop at the time it makes contact. Now, it's a touch shot. If it starts to roll forward a little, uh, you'll get the, the more, if, if it drags here and then releases and starts going top English here, then it's going to go back on this side. Uh, I could end up really screwing myself and having to jump. Uh, and if I hit too much speed and the spin is still drawing when it hits, then it's going to hit and it's going to come back this way, which could also get me in trouble. Uh, if I land it here, I'll have a really wide angle on that seven and I'll have to play three rails around for the eight coming across the zone. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to kill this. I want to absolutely kill the cue ball and just have it drift down somewhere in this general vicinity. Uh, it could be here. And if it is, I'll shoot the seven in, bounce off the rail for the eight. Uh, it could be a little bit further down where I'll stop it and twist it in to the pocket just like I did earlier with that one. Um, I think I did that. Uh, so anyhow, let's go ahead and shoot it. Okay, so it, it, it rolled forward. I've got the angle that I want, that's good. Um, I'm dead straight in. So what I'm going to do is, is shoot to the left of the pocket. Try to leave the cue ball over here for the eight. Uh, if I over hit it, it'll be here and I'll roll forward and play the nine over there. And if I hit it just right, it'll just wander a couple of inches and get me almost straight in. I, I really would prefer not to be perfectly straight in on this. Okay, well, I'm not perfectly straight in. 
Okay, so this is a little weird. The good news is when I shoot the eight, it's going to go, the cue ball is going to pass the nine before it starts to move forward. So I'm going to just use a little top right. Uh, the, the right lets me hit it a little thicker so that I'll come past the nine. Um, and then I'll hit the rail and come up this way, trying to end up in here. Now I could draw this back. The reason I don't like drawing this back is because of the magic rack. What you'll, what you'll see, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it back just so you can see this. When I draw this, because this is sitting in a hole in the magic rack, it's going to cause the rack to move. The nine is also sitting in a hole on the rack. It's going to change where that nine is, even though I don't hit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this just so you can see this. It's actually not a, not a horrible angle. Ha, huh, got lucky, didn't move. Okay, and then we play the nine there. Okay. So you see there, the key to that whole rack was at the beginning getting from one end to the other. And we had to make a good decision on how to do it. You'll also notice that the entire way through, I didn't shoot any real complicated shots. There was nothing in there that was super complicated. The most complicated shot was the getting from the five to the six, where I had to go off the three rails. Um, and you saw how easy that is to do. Um, and I actually used the route that we, we talked about today to get there, which is really cool. Um, you know, when I'm breaking, breaking a random rack, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get to show you what I actually, uh, show you practically what I actually did. Okay, so 